for His goodness, His mercy, and His grace, and for another opportunity just to be able to worship Him. Amen. Let us never take for granted this time that we have to worship God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love You. Lord, we are truly thankful for answering our prayers. God, I pray this morning, God, as we enter into this service, God, as we enter into our pres- into Your presence, Lord, that we would decrease, Lord, that You might increase. God, fill this room with Your presence, Your power, and Your glory. God, because it's not about us, it's all about You this morning. Father, I pray it all today in the name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen with me this morning. Let's worship the Lord today as Brother Terry comes to lead us to worship. morning, everyone. This first song we're going to start off with is, I enter, I will enter His gates. How many are looking forward to that day? I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. Say 
Savior in Him my anger's past. He drives away my sorrow and shields me from the blast. By faith I'm looking upward beyond life's troubled sea. There I behold a haven prepared for me. Oh, I'm anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I'm anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind nor wave. I'm anchored in Jesus, for He has power to save. I'm anchored in the rock of age. Oh, I'm anchored in Jesus, the storms of life I'll brave. I'm anchored in Jesus, I fear no wind nor wave. I'm anchored in I'm anchored in the rock of ages. He keeps my soul from evil and gives me blessed peace. His voice is still the waters and bid their tumult cease. My pilot and deliverer to hear my open mind. For always when I need him, he's at my side. Oh, I'm anchored in Jesus, the life I'll brave. I'm anchored in Jesus, I fear no end or wave. I'm anchored in Jesus, for he has power to save. I'm anchored in the rock of has been redeemed the new has come now I have resurrection power living on the inside Jesus you have given us freedom no longer bound by sin and darkness living your goodness you have given us freedom oh now I have resurrection power living on the inside Jesus you have given us freedom I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness living in the light of your goodness you have given us freedom, oh freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom, my chains are gone, yes freedom, you have given us freedom, you have given us freedom. Hallelujah, sing that again, oh freedom, you have given us freedom. 
freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Oh, freedom. You have given us freedom. Lord, you have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom. And I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. Sing that chorus. Oh, I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus, you have given us freedom. Oh, I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness, Lord, you have given us freedom. Oh, I have resurrection power. You have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Hallelujah. Freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Sing that again and sing it to Him this morning. Oh, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Thank you, Lord. Oh, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. power living on the inside Jesus you have given us free thank you Lord I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness living in the light of your goodness you have given us freedom Worship Him this morning, church. Are you thankful for that freedom today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of you were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you. Christ, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Sing what a wonderful name, what a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a wonderful name it is, and nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus may not mean a lot to you. You may have used in that name as a curse word. But today, Jesus can mean a whole lot more than just a curse word. He can break every chain that Satan tries to place on your life. He can heal your body when it's broken. But most of all, He can heal your soul when you're headed for hell. Jesus is a wonderful name. Jesus is a wonderful name. The Bible says there is no other name given under heaven whereby man might be saved except through the name of Jesus. His name is wonderful today. His name is wonderful this morning. Let's sing it one more time today and give Him the praise that what He deserves. What a wonderful name it is. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a wonderful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and whisper the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Jesus, Jesus. Truly, you are wonderful. Truly, you are our source and our everything today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you came to church with the need, would you slip up your hand? Lift it up to that wonderful name of Jesus. The Bible says He's touched by the feeling of our infirmities today. He's touched. He, he feels... You're hurting your pain this morning. Let's pray. Father, 
We thank you for allowing your son to come to this earth, to be born in that manger, to die on that rugged cross. But we know this morning he did not stay in the tomb, but he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us this morning. Lord, we thank you today for being our redemption, our salvation, our healing today. Lord, we call out to you asking God for your help today. God, you saw the hands. God, but more than that, you see our hearts. I pray, God, this morning you would meet every need here today. God, every spiritual need, every financial need, God, every physical need today. God, we know you are our source. And God, you are the answer today. And God, I pray right now, God, that you would meet every need. God, in this building today, Father, we cast it all at your feet. God, asking for your help today. God, I pray it all in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Death could not hold you. Yes. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. He desires our worship this morning. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name that saved us. Amen. When we were low in our sins. Amen. Jesus came by and He rescued us. He's worthy of our praise today. Hallelujah. Can we give Him another hand of praise this morning? seated if you can be going to ask the ushers to come to receive the morning offering and tithe. Let me know we can't buy our way into heaven. It's a free gift. Amen. Amen. When we have the opportunity to give as unto the Lord, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to give to Him today. Amen. Amen. Brother Luke, would you pray this morning? Sister Darla Smith is going to sing a special for us and just continue with the attitude of worship as she sings. His presence here is so, so sweet. Praise the Lord. Don't you love the Lord this morning? You hold my every moment You calm my raging sea You walk with me through fire And heal all my disease I trust in you I trust in 
have to leave, but he is all I need. Amen. I'm going to dismiss the kids uh, six and under back to junior church. They can go ahead and go back ages six and under. Go back to junior church. Ages six and under.
then ages 7 to 12. Ages 7 to 12. And all you big kids, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 26, verse number 28. Take out your crayons and we're going to come. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Acts chapter 26, verse number 28. How many's enjoying the heat wave? <laughs> mm hmm. Well, I've got about 10 of you, like I said. I'm enjoying it. It's about, what, 100 degrees different than what it was Wednesday? Supposed to be 50 some today, 40 below on Wednesday. Well, about 90 degrees. Wow. But God's still good. Amen. Even in the dark days, Sister Poole, He's still God. We've got to have the cold days. We've got to have the seasons because if we don't have winter, we won't be able to have a good spring and uh, summer. The crops won't grow like they're supposed to. I know we say the Lord deliver us out. Acts chapter 26, verse number 28. If you found that, say amen. If you don't have your Bibles, it's on the screen for you. It said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. This morning I want to preach on the thought of almost is not good enough. Almost is not good enough. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence. God, that we've already felt here this morning. God, I thank you, God, for taking time to be with us this morning here today. And Father, I stand here and I realize I can't do this by myself. I need your help today. God, I call out to you and I ask, God, that you would anoint me and help me, God, to say, God, what you want spoken here this morning. God, help my words to cease. And God, let your words come forth. I pray, God, for a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, anoint me and use me, God, that I could be your microphone declaring the word of the Lord to your people this morning. I pray it all today in that wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody say amen with me again this morning. We all know the scripture, if you've read it, a lot of you have read it, but if you haven't, I'll tell you. We find here that Paul was sharing the scriptures and witnessing to the king Agrippa. And we know that Paul was, amen, testifying and sharing the word of the Lord to him. And he comes to the place and he says, Paul, almost you have persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost I gave my heart to the Lord. Almost I gave in and I gave God control. And I believe this morning if we could open up hell today and we could look into hell. I know a lot of people don't like to hear about hell or to talk about hell, but hell is a real place. And real people go to an eternal hell. Not because God hates them or because God is mad at them, but because men and women have rejected the free gift of salvation that has been brought from Jesus Christ Himself by shedding His own blood, that we do not have to go to eternal hell. But there is a literal eternal hell today, and we could probably look into hell or listen into hell this morning. I believe people would be crying out from hell today saying, I almost became a Christian. I almost gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But we know today almost is not good enough. Almost will not get you into heaven. Amen. We must believe in our hearts and we must confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. When we get to heaven and we say, I was almost persuaded, God's not going to say, it's all right, just come on in. God's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I do not know you. It's not that God is mad or God hates an individual. It's because they reject the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And today in hell there are people crying out. I believe today the torment is running through their minds. I almost became a Christian. I almost gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. But for some reason or other, they refuse the free gift. Amen. I believe there are people today in hell that used to sit in church pews. 
that have heard the gospel message preached. And they might have been on the edge of their pew, almost ready to get out of their pew, and almost walk to the end of the aisle, and walk forth and come and kneel at the altar. They almost gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. But today they are eternally separated from God because why? Almost is not good enough. People today have felt the wooing of the Holy Ghost and they pushed it away and said, not today, maybe some other day. And some other day never came. It wasn't that God, amen, put a curse on them and God, amen, rebuked them and hated them. It was because they rejected the free gift of salvation. Just as Paul offered the gift and shared the Scriptures, amen, there are many that have sat in church pews, amen, all across this nation, all around the world that have heard the Gospel message of how Jesus came and He died and He bled for them, but they choose to refuse. And they push aside the wooing of the Holy Ghost. And we know the day that almost is not good enough. If they can cry out to you today and speak to you from the dead, amen, or from hell today, they would tell you, don't put it aside and don't wait till another day. Amen. Give your heart to the Lord today while you have the opportunity. There are people today that probably heard their mom and dad praying for them. And they refuse to listen. And they refuse to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are people in hell today that probably sat in youth groups, that probably went to the back and they colored the pictures and they heard the stories of how Noah, amen, and Jonah and all the different stories that we tell our children, amen, they were brought up in the ways of God and they were brought up in the house of God, but they almost became a Christian, but for some reason or other, they chose to reject Christ. And today, they're in eternal hell. Almost is not good enough. Almost is not good enough. I believe today that we can know that we know that we know, amen, that everything is all right between me and God. Amen. We don't have to have an almost salvation. Amen. We can have a no-so salvation. We can know that if I die, I'll spend eternity with God. We can know that if I die today, amen, I've done all that I can do. I've heard the voice of God, and I have listened, and I have received Christ as my Savior. You don't have to say, I almost became a Christian. We can have a no-so salvation. We can know Amen, that my name has been written on, amen, the good book in heaven. Amen, we cannot just wish, but we can know that we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we don't have to say, I'm almost saved. We can say, I am saved today. Saved from what? Saved from my sins and saved from hell. Hell was not created for you and I. Hell was created for Satan and the fallen angels. God gave us a way to escape hell. But because people have said, I almost became a Christian. I almost gave my heart to the Lord. And they rejected the gift of salvation. That's why they spend eternity in hell. Almost is not good enough. Almost won't get you in by God saying, well... I know you had a rough life. I know you had a bad past. It's okay. Just come on into heaven. I mean, those not, God's not going to play that game. Either we've confessed Him as Lord or we haven't. Amen. But we can know in our hearts that I'm saved and I'm ready to stand before God. Amen. Almost being a Christian will not get us into the pearly gates. We must have the blood of Christ applied to our hearts and our lives. And the Lord Jesus Christ must sit on the throne of our hearts. Amen. He is not sitting in the back seat. Amen. But He's sitting in the control seat of our heart. Amen. He rules and reigns in our lives today. I believe this morning there's churches full of almost. Full of almost. Some of you here today may say, I've almost become a Christian. Some of you have said some other day. 
Or some of us God has spoken to and God has called us and we can say, I almost got up and I almost preached my first sermon. I almost obeyed the voice of God and I almost did what God called me to do. I almost taught my first Sunday school class. I almost called the one that had been missing church for a couple of weeks. I almost got on the phone and called him and said, I missed you. I almost went up and prayed when the Lord dealed with my heart and He convicted me of something that I'd been battling with in my life. I almost went up and prayed for somebody as God laid them on my heart. I almost got up and sang the song that God laid into my heart. I almost, amen, did this, or I almost did that. But how many knows today almost is not good enough? If God has called you to do something, how many knows we can't stand before God and say, God, I almost did what you called me to do? Amen. Amen. Churches are full of almost. I almost helped at the dinner. I almost got up on Sunday night and came to church. I almost came out on Wednesday night to Bible study. I almost came to the work day. I almost, I almost, I almost, I almost. How many of those almost don't get the job done? There's a lot of people say, I almost came, Pastor. I almost did this. I almost did that. But when we stand before God, almost is not going to be good enough. Our lives are full of almost. I almost went back to school to get my college degree. I almost finished high school. I almost got my high school diploma, but it was too hard. I almost applied for that job, but I thought I was not qualified enough. I almost told my wife I love her. I almost told my child that I love them. I almost witnessed to the person on my job that God laid into my heart. I almost went out of my way to help somebody along the road. The other night when we had the bad weather change, one of our neighbors, Stephanie, was coming home from work. She had fallen. And the trash can had fallen on her that night when the winds picked up and the, the weather came. And she could have drove past. She just had shoulder surgery and she couldn't pick the lady up. Thankfully, she couldn't because she didn't need picked up because she dislocated her hip and her knee was, I believe, dislocated. But she could have drove by and just let her lay there, but she stopped and she called out to her other neighbor. She laid there on the ground with the winds blowing. And, amen. And the neighbor came over and we put blankets on her. And she came and got me and I went over and I did all that I could do. Amen. And I could have walked away or she could have drove past. How many times have we almost stopped and helped somebody? Hmm? Almost. I almost came out and helped out at the church. I almost did what God put in my heart to do. I almost gave in... I'm not here to raise an offering. I almost gave in the offering. I almost did what God laid in my heart to do. But almost is not going to be good enough one day. Amen. I believe this morning we don't have to say almost. How many knows we can fulfill things? Amen. If we'll surrender all to God, God will give you the ability, amen, to do the things that He asks you to do. If God's called you to sing, God will give you the ability to sing. Amen. If God's called you to teach, He'll give you the ability to teach. But we can't say, I almost did it, God. We need to say, God, I'm willing to do it whenever you give me the opportunity. Amen. Some people will say, I almost quit doing drugs. I almost quit smoking. I almost quit drinking. I almost quit gambling. I almost quit talking about my neighbor. I almost quit backbiting. I almost was a good Christian. Huh? I almost, we all hear the I almost, and the almost runs through our minds. We can all think of something that we almost did that we wish we would have. I almost, I almost. 
I almost, but almost is not good enough. Amen. We must do, amen, what God's called us to do. And God has asked you to quit doing something. How many knows we need to quit doing what God says we need to quit doing? Amen. If God told you to quit talking about your neighbor, amen, we need to quit talking about our neighbor. If God said quit smoking, we need to quit smoking. If God said quit drinking, amen, we need to quit drinking. Amen. If God said quit carousing, amen, we need to quit carousing. Amen. We need to do what God has required us to do today. Because almost is not good enough. And just as we stand and we make excuses and we say, I almost, almost is not going to be good enough. Almost is not an excuse for God just to say, okay, you almost. So go ahead and come on in. But no, God's going to require us to do what He's asked us to do. Amen. Just as we can say, almost. I believe this morning we can almost tell the devil he almost had me, but he doesn't. He almost took my life, but he didn't. He almost ruined my home, but he didn't. He almost took my child, but he didn't. He almost caused me to fall, but he didn't. Amen. Psalms 90, or Psalm 73 and 2, it says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Amen. Have you ever been to the place where you felt like you were almost ready just to give in? Your feet had slipped. You went backwards. You've done things you wished you wouldn't have done. You said things you wished you wouldn't have said. And you almost gave up. But some way, somehow, God came on the scene. And God showed up. And you can look at the devil today and you can tell the devil, You almost had me. My feet had slipped. I'd gone backwards, but you don't have me today. Because as long as we have breath, how many knows we can ask God to forgive us? Amen. It's not how many times we fall out, it's how many times we get up. My feet had slipped. Anybody else's feet ever slip? Huh? He almost had you. He had you to the place where you were saying, what's the use? What's the point? I almost gave up. I almost gave in. But thank God I didn't. Amen? Psalms 94, verse 17, it says, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Anybody got to the place where you felt like you were so far away from God, your soul was silenced? Huh? How many knows that's a dangerous place? But that's not the end. And we all have seasons, as Sister Poole taught this morning. We all go through trials, and we all go through dry places. Amen. But we can look at the devil tonight, or this morning, and we can tell him, you almost quieted my spirit. You almost shut my mouth, but you didn't. Amen. I couldn't hold it any longer. I had to give God the praise that He deserved. He'll try to get you to be quiet. He'll try to... Not to get you to listen to gospel music while you're going down the road. He'll try to get your mind scattered on so many different things. He almost, but he can't. How many knows Jeremiah said it well? I tried to be quiet. I tried to shut up. Amen. Jeremiah 20 and 9, it says, Then I said I will make no mention of him. Anybody ever done that before? Saying I'm just going to give up. I'm not even going to talk about God no more. I'm the only one. I have. Brother Dave, I was ready to give up. I was ready to quit. I almost did. That's the key, almost. I almost threw in the towel. I almost said I'll never preach again. I'll never testify. I'll never share the gospel of Jesus Christ again. But there's something that happened on the inside like it does to Jeremiah. Then I said, I will make no mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Amen? Fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I could not be quiet. My soul felt like it had been silenced, but it came to a place, amen, where it just broke out and it began to give God praise. Amen, when the devil steals your praise, you get in trouble. Amen, we need to let the devil know you almost quieted my spirit, but you didn't. I almost didn't praise God today, but I'm going to anyway. Amen?
Just as almost is not good enough for us to get to heaven, almost is not good enough for the devil to take us with him. Amen? He can quiet your spirit, but he cannot steal that fire that's shut up in your bones. Amen? Look at him today and tell him, you almost had me. You almost got me, buddy, but you didn't. Amen? Because why? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Amen? Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Amen? Resist the devil. He's got to flee from you today. Amen? Almost is not good enough, devil. Almost. 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 How many almost do we hear? Almost. I gave up. I almost quit. I almost gave in, but I didn't, thank God. Almost is not good enough. Huh? Almost is not good enough this morning. I will give God the praise that He deserves. I will proclaim the good news because in Him is true life and it's true abundant life tonight, today. Amen? In Him is praise and glory. In Him is goodness. Amen? Let the devil try to quiet your spirit, but you tell the devil almost is not good enough. Amen? We all have an appointment with God. And we all are going to one day stand before Him. You can't avoid it. It may be tomorrow. It may be next week. It may be today. We don't know when we're going to stand before God. But we all have an appointment with God. Whether you think He doesn't exist, whether you claim to be a man, an atheist, you're still going to have an appointment to stand before God. And when we stand before God, almost is not going to be good enough. I don't want to stand before Him in fear and trembling, but I want to stand with Him and say like Paul did, I fought a good fight. I kept the face. I finished my course. Amen. God, I did all that You required me to do. And I want to hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. You may not be called to preach. You may not be called to sing. You may not be called to do any kind of ministry in the church. But the Bible says that we're all called unto Him. Amen. Jesus died for each and every one of you sitting here today. You're called to go to heaven. Amen. You're called to escape hell. Amen. The only way you'll do that is you make a choice and a decision. I'm going to serve God. Almost will not get it done. We have to determine in our hearts, I will make heaven my home. And that will only happen through Christ. Amen. As we stand to our feet today and the singers, musicians come, almost is not good enough. Almost is not good enough. I don't deserve to be standing here today. I don't deserve to be behind this pulpit today. I don't deserve to be alive today. I thank God for my mom, my dad, my grandmas and grandpas that prayed. They called my name out to God because I almost blew it. I almost missed the greatest gift ever to be given to mankind. I almost ruined my life. I was headed for destruction. I was headed to hell. I almost wrecked it all. Thank God for an old preacher. You heard my story. Brother Don Warden come walking to the back of the church. I couldn't say almost any longer. I couldn't resist it anymore. I had to give it all to Jesus today, that day. So we bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. If you're here today and you haven't given it all to the Lord, the altars are open. You know who you are. I'm not here to embarrass you or to scare you. But I'm here to tell you the truth. Almost is not good enough. Almost giving your heart to the Lord is not good enough. Just because you're raised in a Christian home, just because you're brought up in a godly family doesn't give you a free pardon into heaven. We all must come to a place and we must all have a relationship 
with Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning, you're not where you need to be with God, you know who you are. I invite you to these altars. I invite you to get out of your seat and look back at the devil and tell him, you almost had me. You almost convinced me. But I'm going to go forward and give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you need to come today, the altars are open. Come lay it on the altar today. Give your life to Christ. Does that mean my life is going to be perfect? No. But you'll have someone that will walk with you through the darkest days, through the loneliest nights. He'll never leave you, nor will He forsake you. Amen. The altars are open. Would you come? If you don't want to come to the altar, let's all find us a place of prayer. And let's let God search our hearts. Those things that God is dealing you with today, almost is not going to be good enough. Those things that God's saying, get rid of, come lay them on the altar today. Those things in your life that God's required you to do and you haven't done them, come and say, God, give me the strength to do what you called me to do. Can I have some sisters come help pray? Can I have some come over here and help pray? Hallelujah. Let him have his way. Thank you. 
never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never knew amazing grace could touch me here, right in this place. I never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never Touch me here, right in this place. I never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never knew how it felt, but I know now. I never knew. in the world. Oh, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's who? Jesus. Jesus is greater than, than he that is in this world. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you being here this morning. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. Remember service tonight, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, choir practice. Choir members, please be here at 5 o'clock. Tonight, tomorrow night, bowling, Tuesday night, ladies meeting, Wednesday night, Bible study, busy week, sister, bowling Monday night, yep, Monday night, bowling, Tuesday night, ladies meeting, sister Dollar is going to be teaching for us on Wednesday night, so come out to Bible study, you'll be blessed, so if you normally don't come out to Bible study, it's at 7 o'clock Wednesday night, come out and be with us today, amen, let's bow our heads to be dismissed, brother Roy, will you dismiss us in prayer?